welcome to our lecture on memory. The functions of memory uh, include, this is inputting information in memory in the form of memory traces. Memory traces are codes that are stored as information in the memory. Storage is where information is retained in your memory. Retrieval is the ability to call in output information that's stored in memory. Consciousness is an awareness of our own thoughts into the external world. Uh, attention, this is bringing a stimulant into consciousness and becoming aware of it. The types of memory, explicit and implicit memory. Explicit is the conscious use of memory. It relies heavily on language. Uh, information is that is retrieved is typically words that symbolize concepts that are encoded in your memory. Implicit memory is the unconscious use of memory. Things done regularly without per a purposeful thought. Uh, used for everyday tasks, typically nonverbal in nature. Uh, this includes motor skills, habits, classical conditioning, uh, priming, even perceptual learning. Sensory, there's three stages of memory. There's sensory memory, short term, and then of course, long term. Sensory memory uh, is information that comes from our eyes, our ears, and our other senses. If we pay attention to it, it sends, it's kind of sent to the second stage of memory. So if we're talking about the scent or, you know, like people who, you know, have a baby and they smell that baby head, that smell, because you're conscious of it, you can sort of lock it into short or long-term memory because when you say the smell of a baby, everybody all of a sudden knows what you're talking about. So that's sort of the sensory uh, memory. Uh, information, again, comes from our eyes, our ears, other senses. We pay attention to it. It moves to our short term. The capacity is large in this uh, in sensory memory, but the duration is very short. Uh, then there's short term memory. This further processes sensory memory. It acts as a temporary holding tank for limited amounts of information. Holds information for a few seconds and then discards it, refreshes it, or sends it on over to long-term memory. Um, here, the capacity is typically five to nine minutes is what you're looking at when it comes to short-term. A uh, long-term memory, short-term memory is sent for permanent Minute storage. Not all memories go from sensory short term to long term. Some sort of get lost in the sensory, some get lost in short term, but those that are lasting go into our long term sort of permanent uh, storage facility. Uh, there is no known limit to the capacity of long term memory, uh, but the likelihood that any human could ever fill their long term memory is essentially zero. No one can completely fill their long-term memory capacity. A little memory card for your computer or your PlayStation where you've reached your limit. Our long-term memory doesn't have that capacity. You can fill it as long as you need. Um, just a, a funny thing when you guys watch The Simpsons, for those that do, uh, there was a, a one episode where I believe it was Homer said, I can't learn anything new because I'll, I'll lose old information. Well, that's not true. If you learn new information, you can still speak, right? You still you still know how to walk. You learned that many, many, many years ago, and now you're learning about sensory and long memory. They just continue to fit. They just layer themselves and layer themselves. There's no putting out old information, if you will. And flashball memories. These are usually detailed, accurate memories of emotionally charged events. Uh, stress hormones are typically responsible for certain aspects of flashball memories. Uh, but memory has a constructive and reconstructive quality to it. Uh, it creates a combination of recalling the actual event itself as if it was the memory of the event. And over time, 
the combined effect of this remembering process can lead to very innocent but often distorted distorted memories. Um, and this can often be from information effect. Um, this is the disorientation of memory that occurs when people are exposed to misinformation. Uh, memories can be permanently altered by things that happen after these memories are encoded. We accept subsequent misinformation as being correct. Uh, it becomes part of our memory for the original event when our memory of the event is you know, sort of reconsolidated. Um, another example is memories that didn't actually, aren't actually a memory, but you're remembering a story. For example, my mother often tells a story of when I was five years old and I came out and I was asking for her. It's a long, drawn out story. But because I've heard the story so many times in my life, I see it as a memory in my head, but I don't actually remember it. I don't see it, but just because I've been told so many Things, I've sort of created this misinformation memory, even though I don't remember any of it, but I remember it so vividly, and that's only because someone who does remember it has told me time and time again. Therefore, it's become part of my memory. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture.